the MonsterVerse realistic? Do you consider it realistic? What's your definition of realism? What, do you, what about the franchise is realistic? Just really think about it for a minute. What, is, what do you think is realistic? What if I told you the MonsterVerse was never realistic? Simply put, it never has been. The MonsterVerse itself is actually extremely unrealistic. Mostly, it's just grounded in like reality, as in it's on our planet. There are some limitations that are brought forth since it's kind of in our modern timeline, and some stuff was not set up early on enough to where it could make sense, but it was never realistic. See, when you have these giant kaijus who are basically walking nuclear bombs who are like 400 feet tall, stomping around the city fighting, there's nothing realistic about that. The only thing that was really set up realistically is the humans reactions to these monsters but the monsters themselves were never realistic in fact they made the entire franchise unrealistic and the reason why is not because they're designed to make them almost like realistic characters it's not because they were just the way they're presented and stuff is realistic they have qualities and stuff that make them more grounded and more real to the earth but they themselves are never realistic for example, there are plenty of things even back in 2014 that makes no sense. Here's a good example of which Godzilla himself would be dead. He should have died the moment the monster first started. No creature that size could survive just walking. You know, him just walking around, you know, from what we know about him and his body, he seemingly only has one brain and one heart. Maybe they haven't explored it enough. But a creature of his size is going to need multiple hearts and brains to even survive. There's no way he can live at that size without multiple support stuff. No way would his bones be strong enough to hold him. No way would the earth be able to really hold him under his footsteps. You know, he could possibly w live in the ocean. But even that, you know, that could possibly be a lot too. I mean, the earth's biggest creatures aren't nearly as big as him. And they're definitely not getting on land. Godzilla is a creature that's just too big. He would literally die. Same for any other creature in the MonsterVerse. Uh, unless they're explained with some you know, properties or aspects that would make sense. But again, there's even stuff then that wouldn't make sense. There's just no way that a creature like this survive. But what's some other stuff that have been really unrealistic? I mean... There's a lot of stuff that doesn't even like add up. Like In one scene in Godzilla 2014, he's causing a tsunami... Like a massive tsunami, but later on he, d he walks up, does the same thing. He's not causing the tsunami again. It only happens once. What's the difference? Here's the thing: Godzilla's body, you know, as massive as he is, would not cause a tsunami that size. He's talked about to be like 300 feet. Yes, he's, but in 2014, he's much more massive than aircraft carriers. You know, there's stuff, there's scenes where he's walking around in water like he's Jesus in both King of the Monsters and 2014. Yet, it really makes no sense. The only thing that's really, like, again, the only thing that's really realistic about the MonsterVerse is the human aspect in terms of, like, the way they react to these creatures and stuff. You know, especially in 2014, there's, you know, legitimate, realistic reactions. And the way the monsters interact with each other, some of the design properties, are based off real-world traits, once again. But... Nothing about that necessarily just makes everything realistic then. There's a lot of make or break things in the MonsterVerse. And King of the Monsters definitely, definitely added to a lot of the unrealistic factor. With 2014 being the most grounded, yet having some pretty extreme concepts, you know, that we definitely wouldn't see in our world. Once again, there's plenty of concepts and stuff that don't really add up. In our real world, we know there aren't pockets of Hollow Earth, or a Hollow Earth in general. You know, it's been scientifically proven. That's not just something that exists. As a whole, the MonsterVerse isn't much different from basically any other Godzilla franchise. It's definitely going down a Showa-era-esque route, maybe Heisei, where it starts out, I would say more show, where it starts out pretty grounded. I mean, about as close to realism as you can get with 
1954. And then in just a few movies, it gets super sci-fi and super unrealistic. I mean, you can argue the MonsterVerse is going a little bit too fast. And of course, as always, the sins of a past movie, or just sins of something else, do not make new ones right. Just redoing them right. You're supposed to learn. However, you know, series like the Showa era, which are considered, you know, amazing by most fans, I would say. You know, this movie, these movies are definitely going that same route. But... I digress. I trust me. I would personally prefer more of a 2014 tone too. I love 2014, but I can fully acknowledge it's not a realistic movie. But you know, if we go from let's go from 2014 King of the Monsters, for example, you know, 2014 is extremely grounded. The monsters feel like they could actually be there. They have weight. They're heavy. You know, stuff shatters under them. You know, the ground shaking with each footstep. It's loud. They're extremely just... They fight. They're violent. They're like animals. Then you move the King of the Monsters where they have no weight. They feel like two people in rubber suits running around in a, like a uh, structure city like the old Toho films, you know? There's no weight. They don't fight like animals as much. There's a lot more human-esque moves and stuff done to them, I would say. There's a lot more stuff, you know, with their their intelligence is increased heavily in the, that movie. You know, it's not like the Mutos versus Godzilla. It's a very different fight. Uh, there's, like, you know, Mothra is extremely unrealistic in the movie, I would have to say. I would say she... A lot of people say would Ghidorah would be the most unrealistic thing. I don't know, guys. I would say, arguably, Mothra would be the most unrealistic it's not because of her powers. It's not because she's whatever she does. You know, all the creatures are unrealistic. But her in particular, and this is confirmed, you know, like, she has the power to literally, like, put her ashes on Godzilla and give him a new power-up, basically, that helps him survive. There's nothing realistic about that. You know, in this whole film, there's nothing at all that can make that something logical where you know a creature like mothra could literally put her ashes like there's no real world example that i know of of where a creature can die get on top of another animal like how rodan did in the heisei series and power up another animal i just don't know about that you know that's more dragon ball-esque than like lion king you know it's just one of those things where it's like i don't really see i get it a lot of people want to go back to the 2014 tone trust me i would love the 2014 tone back we're kind of at a point now where we have to accept though there's not really any going back you know king of the monsters was kind of where we're at and you either stay at king of the monsters level or go from there and for a series to survive you have to evolve that's not just in movies it's in music and plenty of other things you know, for something that actually works, has to evolve. Look at the MCU. It started out, like, I would argue pretty real realistic, especially since we've seen plenty of people in real life actually make pl plenty of components from the Iron Man suit. And some people are even working on entire Iron Man suits now. And plus, you know, Iron Man, that movie had a much bigger budget and stuff. And towards the end, that end game where it's all balls to the wall. You know, stuff has to evolve to survive. So theme stuff have to change, you know, to, to get different, you know, stuff that happens in the movies. They, it just has to happen. That's the only way a franchise can survive. And a lot of stuff now just seems kind of just odd to me. Because now we're at a point where people are having, like, really extremely heated, crazy debates over an aircraft carrier. An aircraft carrier. I mean, like... A lot of people are trying to argue, you know, like, oh, can the aircraft carrier work? No, it can't. No, it's, some people are literally saying it ruins the movie. Guys, we, you know, Jesus wasn't a giant kaiju lizard. You know, he was a human. I mean, like, stuff like that in the movies. It just sounds nitpicky. From what we know from, like, really reliable sources and what's been proven, the aircraft carrier is not surviving that battle. We've seen, we've heard it's going to crumble apart. We've seen uh, the concept art where it looks like it is crumbling apart. 
and we've even seen behind scenes photos with giant boats like destroyed are likely going to be like CGI later as an aircraft carrier. I just don't see what's the point of arguing about the realism at this day and age of the monsterverse. There's nothing really to argue about, you know? Why argue about realism when from the start it really wasn't? Yes, there's some they try to introduce that some real world physics do logically work, which they do, although plenty of if not most of the real world physics have been broken since the first film for the ones that have survived you know why not just break them at this point too you know this is a segment like this was going to be like a video part of video you know for the mg i was going to make and i'm still planning on working on it I'm pr i might still redo this segment for that video but it's like this just needs to be like addressed now because i've seen some super heated debates over the aircraft carrier and it's kind of ridiculous you know, this movie's going to bring a lot of attention because everyone's now going to, like, really want to argue about it. You know, like I said, MG, you know, that's a lot of people's breaking point currently on the MonsterVerse. And it's like, why is that the thing that breaks it? Because it's not realistic to you. Why? What has been realistic, though? Again, I've seen all the movies, so have you. And I can tell you from the start, nothing makes sense. Creatures Godzilla size should not survive. You should die immediately without more hearts and brains. You would not be causing tsunamis. You would not be walking on water. They would not be running in a city without the whole city just falling apart and them dying from their bones not being able to support them and their heart and stuff just going into cardiac arrest. They would not be just making that. Nothing wouldn't be shaking from them moving like how it was in King of the Monsters where it felt like they didn't even exist. None of that would happen, you know, and there are a lot of stuff in the monsters technology wise stuff that yes, they do can kind of make sense. Even in King of the Monsters, stuff like the Argo jet and stuff isn't impossible, but even then, if people want to start fighting about something like Mechagodzilla or something, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, I get it. A lot of people, there's like this really big misconception that the monsterverse was realistic, but it never really has been. There's just some stuff, and we still don't even know anything about how that's going to be built, what it's going to be built with, who's building it, you know, all this stuff. We just have guesstimates and stuff, you know, there's nothing to really make, you know, we just got to take what we know and just see if we got it right. Who knows, there could be aliens building stuff in the MonsterVerse, you know, the aircraft carrier could be a Monarch aircraft carrier that can hold, you know, like 300,000 tons that won't just completely fall apart in the ocean you know there's a lot of stuff we don't know but the one thing we do know is that the monster verse simply put was never realistic it was just more grounded at the start than most godzilla franchises but you could never make a series like godzilla realistic per se unless you potentially made them really small creatures and that you know weren't as powerful you know, 98, you could argue, honestly, is one of the most realistic Godzilla movies in a way. But, what do you guys think of all this? I thought I should just get some of that off my chest. This is actually, like, my third time recording this segment of the video. I've had the audio deleted twice for this video, and it's been kind of getting a little annoying to just keep re-recording over and over and talk about the points over and over. But, do you guys agree, disagree, what do you think? You know, again, I might just, I might redo the segment again for an MG video. I have plenty of stuff to talk about. There's a lot of really weird misconceptions and points that people try to make about the MonsterVerse. But, like I said, it's not really realistic. But, you know, agree to disagree. It's artist interpretation. You know, it's art. We're allowed to interpret it how we want. There's things that are confirmed. There's stuff about the MonsterVerse that, even if you want to argue it's realistic, it doesn't add up. You know, there's just plenty of stuff. But... As always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Turn on that bell notification, get notification on all future uploads. And I hope you all have a great day. As always, peace and bye-bye.